a remote swamp in Finland. The melt reveals a glut of food. This is bear territory. And every spring they gorge on the spoils. But a mother wolf needs food too. With seven pups to feed, she's on a collision course with the greedy bears. This is her battle for survival. Speed, agility, and wit. Versus size, strength, and bad tempers. She's got to be light on her feet to stay alive. One slip, and it's over. It may not look like it, but spring is imminent in the frozen north. Wolves in the Arctic have been active throughout the winter, hunting elk, moose, or reindeer to stay alive. A single wolf is relatively weak, but as a pack, they're formidable. And they're fast and tough. Endurance and teamwork is key to wolf success. Bears are different. They sleep the cold winter away. But now the temperature rises and this landscape is set to change. Mother Bear emerges from a six-month slumber. She hoped for something warmer. Spring is late this year. Food is paramount, but as long as it snows, finding any is tough. Her two yearling cubs denned with her. They're hungry, scouring the icy ground for anything to eat. The cubs hear howling. Wolves are nearby. When this last snow stops, life will change for another very devoted mother. She-Wolf is on the move. She's the alpha female of a pack of expert reindeer hunters. But with the sun, the herds migrate south. Her pack will follow them. But She-Wolf has a dilemma. She's den nearby and she must stay behind to tend her pups. And that means meeting the bears in the swamp without the support of the pack. For She-Wolf, it won't be an easy summer. The bears own the swamp, 
and it's very valuable territory. With the melt, a buffet of carcasses will be revealed. Lives lost in the harsh winter and remains cast aside by hunters. The bears rise from their hibernation dens to fatten up on the spoils. It's their summer feast. The surrounding forest belongs to the wolves. It's She-Wolf's fortress and her nursery. The reindeer are the wolves' winter mainstay, but they're on an 800-mile migration south for the summer, and the wolf pack will follow. Only the alpha pair will stay to tend their brood alone. Without reindeer, they will need to compete with bears for food. When brown bears awake, they need to exert dormant muscles. During hibernation, the bears don't eat, drink, pee, or poop. For half a year, they hardly move at all. But special metabolic adaptations stop their muscles from wasting away. These two males engage in a wrestling workout to get the blood pumping. Friendly for the time being. Bears hunt alone, but in the swamp, there's no need. As the snow starts to melt, the familiar scent of carrion focuses them. While the wolves prepare to leave with the reindeer. New life slows the herd down, so they must stay on the move. pack is adapted to follow. <laughs> Hunting in the snow is tough for most predators, but wolves are built for this. Like all members of the dog family, they walk on the tips of their toes with the heel not touching the ground. It makes them fast runners, even in the thick snow. Strong, blunt claws provide grip as they move through ice. The rear paws fall exactly where the front lifts, so they're silent. A pack is held together by the strongest of family bonds. She-Wolf and her Alpha are the leaders. They're the first to eat from a kill, and they alone have the right to breed. They decide when the pack eats, sleeps, and travels. With the reindeer moving on, the time has come for the wolf pack to split. The pups demand their mother, and She-Wolf needs the support of Alpha. Another wolf will have to take the lead. Wolves use attitude and body language to demonstrate dominance and leadership in the pack. Alpha hands over the reins to his second-in-command, the Beta Wolf. 
He will lead the reindeer hunt while the alpha pair stay near the swamp. As if saying their goodbyes, the wolves start to howl. Howling strengthens social bonds amongst wolves. They can hear each other howl up to 10 miles away. This way, they keep in touch, a unit even when they're apart. Alpha and She-Wolf head for the den, unaware of the battle ahead. Their opponent is a heavyweight. A gray wolf generally weighs under a hundred pounds, but a brown bear can weigh over a thousand. Like the Swamp King, one of the biggest male bears in the area, He's patrolling his turf, following his nose. He can smell a meal from 20 miles away. His is one of the most powerful noses in the animal kingdom. A bear's nose pad is wired with hundreds of tiny muscles that manipulate the nostrils to smell from different directions. He can tell which scents are new and which are old by the difference in intensity. The air passes into an intricate web of mucous membranes. Here, a heat exchanger warms and humidifies cold air before it enters the lungs. Then, air is detoured to the back of the nose where odor chemicals are processed. 10 million nerve strands and a billion receptor cells fire electrical signals directly to the brain. His nose is 10 times more powerful than a wolf's. The Swamp King tracks down the rotting feast. But a younger bear is already tucking in. Hunger makes him ornery and dangerous. But the young bear is having his first decent meal in over six months. He's not about to give it up to the Swamp King without a fight. The first carcass in the swamp has been claimed by a big young bear. The bigger Swamp King is moving in for a piece. His reputation precedes him, and the young bear backs off. But the king is looking for a fight. is no match for the Swamp King. As the biggest and strongest, he claims the carcass and the territory. If this was a one-on-one -on -one with a wolf, Wolf would be dead. Standing nine feet tall, the king marks the site with a scent. Wow. 
Now he's dominant, so he gets to eat first. And unless a bigger, stronger bear challenges him, he can have as much as he wants. Others have to wait their turn. In less than a month, all the snow is gone. Spring is finally here. Icy plains transform into lakes and lush boreal forests full of life. The bears are in their element. They have only a short summer to fatten up, and the protein from the rotting meat is going a long way. They must make up for lost time. But the ravens are a problem. They're a giveaway, shouting, here's the food. She-wolf is bound to her den in the forest. Her partner, Alpha, hasn't killed for days, and they have many mouths to feed. Then she sees them. Ravens. She summons her mate. With the reindeer gone, carrion is the next best thing. But when the pair arrive at the feast, they're faced with a welcome party. Wolf and bear are here for the same thing. Dead meat. But the bears have laid claim. The two wolves are hopelessly outnumbered, but they're hungry, and so are their pups. They will need a game plan to get the big bears off the carcass. A young bear approaches. Perfect. He's not versed in wolf tactics and will scare easily. The wolves stage a mock charge on the young bear. distracts the bigger adults. Some come to the young one's aid and leave the carcass unattended. Just what She-Wolf was waiting for. just needs a little meat. The 
bears have been fooled, and they know it. Most of the carcass is still there, so they get back to the business of fattening up. Little do they know, they haven't seen the last of the wolves. She-wolf gulps down her steel from a safe distance. It's paramount that she eats fast. She's the one who will feed the pups. Her large, simple stomach is adapted for storing food instead of quick digestion. Today, all she got was a mouthful, but it will have to do. The pups are waiting. She-Wolf races to the den. Her muscles are lean from her pure protein diet, so her skeleton can be light. She's built for running. She could cover up to 100 miles a day, running for hours on end. She leaves the swamp and ducks into the forest, her secret fortress. for her. They were born last summer. Some will move into their own territories when they're two years old. Others will stay with this pack. For now, they're tasked with guarding the den. But they're not She-Wolf's priority today. The forest is a refuge from the bears. They don't bother following the wolves into this difficult terrain. A network of scent trails gives news of what everyone has been up to. The youngsters are hoping for scraps. But they know it's not their turn to eat. She heads straight back to her den to find the little ones. It's feeding time. The alpha female has returned from the swamp with a fresh meal for her young. She makes sure she wasn't followed. At six weeks old, her pups are not ready to hunt with the pack. But they're weaning off her milk and now need something more. They smack their lips to beg for food. regurgitates the meat she stole from the bears. And the pups attack it. From now on, meat is their food of choice. And there's plenty more where this came from. But it means the wolves must face the bears again. The lanky yearlings keep a watchful eye on their younger siblings. The pups will never be alone. When the whole pack regroups, every member will help raise and protect them. For now, the den is still the safest place for them. With tummies full, it's nap time. The young wolves are not ready to face the bears, 
so She-Wolf returns to the swamp to get more food. It's risky, but she's desperate. Mother Bear and her yearling cubs have put on good weight since they woke up. The cubs were born over a year ago, but still suckled on their mother throughout hibernation. She's a single parent with no help from her mate or other bears in raising the cubs. The trio is joined by several other bears thanks to the food in the swamp. Bears will tolerate each other, but unlike wolves, they don't work together. Some of the cubs are experiencing their first summer. While the older bears have been coming here every year for decades. Because there's another reason for so many bears in one place. Mating season is here. A time when male bears become very aggressive. Swamp King is rubbing his scent on more trees. He's sending messages to the other bears. He's available. The king picks up the scent of another male. He's got competition, an intruder on his turf. Female bears want a male with good genes, and for bears, good genes are revealed by winning fights. Mother bear already has cubs, so she's not interested in mating. But the Swamp King is known to kill the cubs spawned by rival males, forcing the female to accept him as a new mate. Mother Bear senses the danger. She chases her young up the trees to safety. the intruder if he's going to impress the females. And a fight between rival males can be deadly. It's mating season for the bears of the swamp and tension is running high. This is the Swamp King's turf. He's looking for a mate. But now, there's an intruder with the same agenda. She-Wolf is also on the scene. She's back to get more food for the yearlings. Her timing has to be perfect. A bear fight could count in her favor. The Swamp King challenges the intruder.
But with one swipe of a massive paw, the king is dethroned. The intruder is the new ruler. The Swamp King is deposed. The social upheaval distracts the bears, and She-Wolf takes her chance. This time, she scores big. The intruder lets her go. He has no energy left after the fight. She'll gorge before returning to the forest. The yearling wolves are delighted at the welcome meal. They hunt rodents and birds, but still need handouts from the alpha pair to build strength for the looming winter. Unlike the bears, the wolves are incredibly social. The youngsters will always have a strong bond with their pack Their mother teaches them how to be wolves. Everything she does is a lesson, including hiding meat and storing it for later. Wolves also scent mark their food, but it's not a warning. Her pheromones invite her youngsters to eat, and they're perfectly adapted for their meaty diet. Everything about a wolf's teeth says carnivore. Pointed incisors and long, sharp canines kill quickly, while interlocking jaws allow canines to hold on to prey. Carnassial teeth are sharp for cutting meat, and premolars are used for crushing bone. Chunks of meat are swallowed whole, and no grinding is needed, so the molars are reduced. They waste very little. Every last piece of meat is eaten off the bone. As the summer turns, storms roll in. Another sign that the seasons are forever moving. And with them, the animals of the swamp must adapt if they want to survive. As fall approaches, bears enter a state of excessive eating known as hyperphagia. They'll consume up to 90 pounds a day. The aim is to double their body weight before heading into hibernation again. It's the only way they'll survive another winter of not eating. But the feast is running out. And with the stakes so high, the bears are getting desperate. Scars tell stories of battles over females and food. Downpours make the swamp treacherous and muddy. But for a bear, water is not a problem. Despite their weight and size, bears are excellent swimmers. They propel themselves with their giant front paws and water doesn't penetrate their thick fur. 
Unlike wolves, bears can eat much more than just meat to bulk up. They cross the pond to get to one of their other favorite foods. Berries. A bear can eat over 200,000 berries in one day. With a diet so diverse, their teeth are specially adapted multi-tools. Bears and sizers are flat blades used for clipping grass, cutting roots, and dicing meat. Their canines are huge, great for ripping open logs or delivering a killing bite. Brown bears lack the flesh-shearing carnicial teeth of typical carnivores. Molars are broad and flat, perfect for grinding tough vegetation. They're not picky eaters. While they are capable of hunting for meat and picking fruit too, they're really built for digging. Their claws are like shovels powered by enormous shoulder muscles. They dig up juicy roots buried up to 10 feet deep with paws the size of dinner plates. Separated bones in a bear's forearm enable it to rotate its limbs. This improves its ability to dig, climb, and manipulate its food. Unlike wolves, bears walk on the entire foot. Large, flat paws can bear great weight, but come at the cost of speed. Their non-retractable claws, unbelievably, are the size of an adult finger. The bounty of the swamp will soon be a memory. Winter is coming. The bears are now constantly patrolling the swamp. They're all here. They're desperate and they're greedy. prowling the edges as usual. She must take on the bears again if her pups are to eat. There's no room for a truce. And it's come down to the last carcass. In the swamp, the bears are panic feeding. Winter is fast approaching, and with only one carcass left, there's not a lot to go around. She-Wolf is also desperate. This is her last chance at a free meal for the pups before the pack return with the reindeer. The swamp is now a battlefield. Fat bears versus She-Wolf. Bears are used to fighting. They're much bigger, and they have the numbers. She-Wolf has much to lose. If she gets injured, the pups and yearlings will probably starve. All are drawn to the swamp.
ground. It's tougher to break through the bear fortress. The wolf pair must work as a team. It's what they know best. Hungry bear takes courage. The wolves have plenty. If the bum biting can entice the bears to chase one wolf, the other can plunder. mouthfuls, but it's not enough. The bears are getting tired. They can't keep up with the fast wolves. And it gives She-Wolf the break she needs. the prize. The bears don't have the energy for a chase. Against all odds, the wolves fooled the bears and the wolf pups will get one last big meal before winter comes. The winner in nature is not always the biggest or the strongest. It's the one best adapted to survive. And when survival is at stake, the most basic of rules apply. Take what you need the way you know best. summer, the wolves will be back to raid the swamp again. And there will be more of them. <laughs>